all those who inhabit it, my name is Neil and I am your host of Scientifically Speaking. On this show, we explore topics from psychology to biology and even more. All that I ask is for you to keep an open mind. With all that hullabaloo out of the way, let's dive right in. Have you ever wondered why you had a dream where you ate lazy tacos with Theodore Roosevelt after a nice cricket game? Or perhaps why you woke up after getting chased down the Wilkes Greenway by 45 colonels? Well, me too. Let's try and start from the beginning. Our bodies have what is known as a circadian rhythm, which is our 24-hour biological clock. This clock is regulated by our pineal glands in our brains. If you're unfamiliar with the pineal gland, this is a brain structure that Rene Descartes used to believe sat the human soul. More empirically proven, the pineal gland releases a serotonin-derived hormone known as melatonin, which controls sleep patterns in our circadian rhythm. Now that we know what monitors sleep, let's actually get into sleep. Well, don't fall asleep on me, please. That's kind of rude. But let's discuss the stages of sleep. Firstly, we have stages one and two. During these stages, we start to see that heart rate and respiration slow down. If we were to record someone via EEG, we could detect what are known as sleep spindles, which are bursts of EEG activity, as well as K-complexes, which are giant spikes of activity. Think of a time during sleep where you close your eyes and you, s you felt like you were falling. And then you suddenly wake up. That is what is known as a hypnic jerk. These are commonly reported in stage one and two, so don't think anything is wrong with you. Nobody is certain as to why hypnic jerks occur, but they do. Next up, we have stages three and four. In this stage of sleep, brain waves known as delta waves get produced. Delta waves are large in amplitude or size and are slow in frequency or rate. When the brain is active, we see small amplitude waves and high frequency waves like beta waves. So we associate being awake with fast and small waves and being asleep with big and slow waves. In stages three and four, the brain is slower and less active. Respiration and heart rate is super low, but that is normal. Now, in this stage, we don't dream. However, Night terrors can occur here. Night terrors differ from nightmares because night terrors aren't dreams. They are feelings of fear and sometimes images of fear may occur during sleep. In this stage, sleepwalking and sleep talking also occur. Last but certainly not least, we have REM sleep or rapid eye movement. In REM sleep, we see an increase of heart rate and respiration. However, your muscles are flaccid or paralyzed. REM sleep is also known as paradoxical sleep because though we are asleep and inactive, we have a very active brain. This is the stage where dreaming occurs. Dreaming, as you may already know, can be either good or it can be bad. We may not know what purpose dreaming serves us when we sleep, but we have many different structures to thank for REM sleep and experiencing dreams. First, we have the pons, which is on the brain stem. During REM, it inhibits motor neurons within our spinal cord to make our muscles flaccid. How do we know this? If you lesion or destroy the pons, there will be muscle activity during REM sleep. Next up on the batter's list is our very own limbic system. This area of the brain is activated during sleep and it helps evoke emotions. If we are to look at brain waves during dreaming, we have certain types of brain waves that are being produced. They are called pontogeniculo occipital waves, or PGO for short. The brain structures that are associated with these waves being produced are the pons, the lateral geniculate nucleus, which is the visual relay center in the thalamus, and the occipital cortex regions of the brain. I mean, simply think about it. We see our dreams, we hear our dreams, 
and we experience these dreams, it makes sense that these structures are activated during REM sleep. While we don't know why we sleep and dream, we know that we dream. We know how we dream. All that we can do is theorize and investigate these very interesting phenomena for now. With all of that jargon out of the way, thank you all so much for watching this episode of Scientifically Speaking. I'm your host, Neil, and I'm going to catch you in the next episode.